Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator, and welcome to the Ice Cream series. If you have any game or video suggestions, make sure to send them to me on my subreddit or Twitter. Keep in mind that this video will have spoilers of all the franchise, and with that in mind, let's begin. In the opening scene, the protagonist witnesses a plum boy innocently approaching the ice cream truck parked near their home. To his horror, the ice cream man suddenly attacks the unsuspecting child, trapping him in the cage at the back of the truck. The boy is frozen solid, transformed into an icy statue. Driven by a sense of urgency, the protagonist decides to rescue the trapped child. Stealthily, he sneaks into the ice cream truck, determined to set things right. Meanwhile, the ice cream man's demeanor remains oddly jolly singing gleefully and expressing anticipation for capturing more children. I'm going to kill some kids today. I'm looking for the chump puppy one. Going to As they venture further into the truck, a map slips from the ice cream man's back pocket and the protagonist swiftly grabs it, discovering that it's a detailed neighborhood map pinpointing the locations where the ice cream man hunts for his victims. The ice cream man's initial destination is a cafeteria where he talks about making his frozen treats using the captive chubby children. From there he embarks on a journey making stops at diverse locations such as a parking lot, storage unit a playground and other intriguing spots. While venturing through these locations, our protagonist stumbles upon a forgotten diary belonging to a certain individual named Rod, dating back to September of 1972. In its pages, Rod disturbingly confesses to creating a mysterious machine and using chubby children as unwilling test subjects. Justifying his actions, he states that such children provide an ample supply of material and they are less likely to be missed, making them ideal specimens for his sinister experiments. Another entry from January the 3rd, 1973 unveils Rudd's troubled past, revealing a history of mistreatment and bullying suffered at the hands of his classmates. This maltreatment has fueled his deep-rooted animosity towards children. Furthermore, the diary sheds light on Rudd's familial connections, disclosing that his father was once an ice cream man himself, with a desire to follow in his father's footsteps, Rod obsessively seeks a special ingredient vital to his wicked pursuits. The April of 1974 entry unveils Rod's twisted success obtaining the elusive secret ingredient. This mysterious substance when infused into the ice cream has the power to transform children into obese individuals with just a single scoop, turning each innocent treat into a lethal weapon that slowly destroys them from within. Rod laments the fact that the same effect does not occur with adults requiring significantly higher doses of the secret ingredient. In the first entry, dated July of 1975, Rod proclaims himself as the ice cream maker, fueled by vengeance and a desire to harm not only children but also adults who have wronged him in the past. With his potent secret ingredient ready, capable of causing the demise of an adult within a mere two hours, he mentions his next target as an individual named Daniel J. Lives. In his deluded state, Rod perceives himself as a hero, assuming the role of a vigilante while inflicting harm on those he deems deserving. After a series of determined efforts, the young protagonist successfully locates the key to the cage, imprisoning the chubby boy and sets him free. With newfound freedom, the boys quickly escape the Rod's ice cream truck. In a gesture of gratitude, the rescued child presents the protagonist with a peculiar blender, adding an air of mystery to their encounter. Now to the second installment, it commences with a photograph dated December 1982, featuring two boys named Jay and Charlie. These resilient youngsters who successfully evaded the clutches of the ice cream man in the previous chapter appear to share a pre-existing connection. Another picture captures the pair alongside their friend Mike and Charlie's sister, Liz, showcasing Jay's tight-knit circle of companions. Shortly after Jay manages to rescue Charlie, he spots Liz, Charlie's sister, across the street, unaware of her brother's recent ordeal. Liz encourages Jay to come out and play and join the the boys at their secret hideout. However, tragedy strikes as Liz falls victim to the ice cream man, becoming his captain. <laughs> 
determined to save her, Jay courageously enters the ice cream truck once more, embarking on a journey through various locations in search of means to free Liz. During his exploration, Jay reunites with his friend Charlie and Mike at their secret lair. Mike trades an old door handle for a pink perfume bottle, which unexpectedly aids Jay in discovering a key to the cage holding Liz captive. Just as Jay had helped Charlie before, he now sets Liz free using the key. However, the situation takes a turn for the worst when Jay hastily leaps off the moving ice cream truck while frightened Liz remains trapped inside. Witnessing Liz's desperate plight, Mike and Charlie are filled with anger and desperation. In a fit of frustration, Mike angrily discards the pink perfume bottle, originally intended as a heartfelt gift for Liz, symbolizing his unspoken affection for her. Meanwhile, Liz's cries for help echo within the confines of the ice cream truck, making her escape seemingly impossible. In the second installment, we delve deeper into the lives of the protagonist and their friends, while also gaining insight into the troubled past into the troubled past of Rod, the ice cream man himself. Through a poignant scene, we witness Rod as a young boy in April of 1954, depicted as a chubby kid who endures relentless bullying and finds himself in a state of helplessness. In a transformative moment, Rod engages in a conversation with his younger self, revealing a significant change in his personality as he grows older and assumes the feared identity of the ice cream man. During his poignant exchange, Rod assures his child self that he won't remain weak and helpless forever. He envisions himself becoming a superior ice cream man, surpassing the achievements of his own father. This newfound prowess will grant him the power to exact revenge upon those who have caused him pain. Rod cryptically mentions that unexpected assistance will arrive in the form of a letter from his mother, which will reveal something of great importance. These revelations shed light on the reasons behind Rod transformation into the malevolent ice cream man, confirming his deep-seated resentment towards children and his twisted desire to make them chubby. The intricate pieces of Rod's troubled past begin to connect, providing a glimpse into the events that led him down this path of darkness. Additionally, we discover that Rod himself has become overweight as a result of his father's secret ingredient. Consuming one of his father's ice creams caused him to rapidly gain weight, turning him into a target of bullying at school. This experience fueled Rod's obsession with finding the secret ingredient which he believed would enable him to make other children chubby and seek revenge for the mistreatment that he endured. Rod openly admits that he has never had the opportunity to meet his mother and despite having a fondness for his father, he harbors resentment towards him for not providing enough time and attention. In fact, Rod goes as far as suggesting that whatever fate befell his father, other may have been well deserved. These revelations shed light on the deep-rooted emotions and motivations that drive Rod's malevolent actions as the ice cream man. His personal experiences, coupled with a thirst for retribution, have shaped him into the twisted character he has become. Now going to the third installment, a newspaper article from the January of 1983 captures the faces of Liz and her brother Charlie, declaring them missing for several days. Jay, filled with desperation and determination, searches for a way to rescue his friends from the clutches of the evil ice cream man. Overwhelmed by the situation, Jay is shown sleeping at his desk, consumed by his quest. Suddenly, Jay spots the ice cream man's truck parked in front of his house. His friend Mike emerges armed with a homemade shotgun, bravely confronting Rod and accusing him of holding Les captive. Rod dismisses the seriousness of the accusations, laughing off Mike's claims and revealing his indifference towards the identities of the children that he captures. To Rod, any chubby child is suitable for his twisted purposes of creating the secret ingredient. In a swift turn of events, Rod captures Mike, subjecting him to his ice cream and transforming him into a chubby boy, just like the others before him. Jay rushes to the rescue once more, boarding the ice cream man's truck. 
Upon arriving at a camping site, Jay discovers Les hiding in the bushes. She questions Jay about his previous attempt to help her, reflecting on her decision not to jump from the moving van like Charlie had done earlier. Les realizes that Charlie had wanted to warn her about this very outcome, but it was too late. She had already fallen into the clutches of the ice cream man. Concerned for Charlie's whereabouts, Jay and Les decide to venture back to the van, hoping to free Mike and return home safely. On their way back, close to the secret lair, Jay discovers Charlie, who has been hiding, disguised as a box, for days. Filled with anger and disappointment, Charlie confronts Jay for not informing him about his sister's capture. Despite his fear and apprehension, Charlie asserts his bravery, determined to face the ice cream man head-on. Jay manages to persuade Charlie to join their mission, knowing that together, they stand a better chance of saving all four of their friends. Once Jay successfully frees Mike, Rod, the ice cream man, opens the door to discover all four friends gathered in the back of his ice cream truck, laughing defiantly in his face. Rod gleefully declares that they make a great team, suggesting that it was his plan all along to have all four of them captive. Amidst the chaos, Jay discovers a peculiar chemical compound within Rod's van, allowing him to make a daring escape once more, though it means leaving his friends behind again. In the next installment, we delve deeper into the past of Rod and his father. We discover that Rod's father, Joseph Sullivan, was a renowned ice cream maker. Traditionally, he was fatally struck by an unknown person in December 1955. This incident left Rod orphaned and filled with immense pain and sorrow at a young age. Shortly after receiving the devastating news of his father's demise, Rod is visited by a mysterious woman. She mysteriously implies that he must understand something, hinting that she may have been involved in Joseph Sullivan's death or possesses knowledge about it. The woman departs, leaving behind a letter from Rod's mother, whom he remembers only vaguely due to the lack of contact since he was around four years old. In the letter, Rod's mother extends her birthday wishes on his 15th birthday and offers her condolences for Joseph Sullivan's passing. She encourages Rod to remain strong and apologizes for not being able to care for him as she is needed elsewhere. Despite the death stance, Rod's mother continues to send annual letters on his birthdays, urging him to visit her, although he harbors resentment and appears to reject her, blaming her for his father's death and resenting her absence throughout his childhood, understandably. The surprising revelation is made that Rod's mother is actually Sister Madeline, a nun who, alongside other nuns, proclaimed Rod's birth in December 1940 as a miracle. Sister Madeline persists in her attempts to reach out to Rod even though she cannot visit him in person. On his 24th birthday, she sends him a final letter accompanied by a book containing a secret. In the letter, Sister Madeline explains that the book holds the knowledge Joseph Sullivan had stolen from her, a formula that had enabled him to become a famous ice cream man. Sister Madeline claims to have enhanced the formula and wishes to impart this knowledge to Rod. She reveals that the chemical compound sent synthesized through this knowledge possesses the power to create or extinguish life. Unfortunately, it becomes apparent that Rudd chose to utilize this knowledge to bring harm rather and create life. These revelations shed light on the complex relationship between Rod, his parents, and the events that shaped his path towards darkness as the ice cream man. The connection between his father's legacy, his mother's role as a nun, and the potent chemical compound adds depth to Rod's character and the motivations driving his malevolent actions. In the fourth installment, the ice cream man Rod transports a captive Jay to his ice cream factory. Jay's appearance suggests that he has has become chubbier, hinting that the chemical compound he discovered previously might be the secret ingredient used by Rod to make children gain weight. Inside the factory, Jay reunites with his friends, who are also confined to cages by Rod. Rod openly admits to his sinister actions, revealing that he takes children to a special room where he squeezes them to extract their essence, using it as a key ingredient for his unique ice cream. With quick thinking, Jay manages to free himself from 
captivity and embarks on a mission to release his friends while exploring the factory. After various trials, Jay successfully liberates his imprisoned companions. However, their escape doesn't go unnoticed and Rod becomes aware of their actions. Filled with frustration that the children have once again eluded him, Rod vows to track them down and recapture them, fully aware that they are still trapped within his factory. In the fifth installment set in January 1983, the children find themselves trapped within Rod's factory as their previous escape from the cages provided only temporary relief. As the children attempt to evade Rod's clutches, they become separated and must reunite swiftly to avoid being recaptured once more. Fortunately, Mike and Jay successfully locate each other amidst the labyrinth of a factory. Determined to save their friends Charlie and Liz, they join forces and embark on a quest to find and rescue them. In an April 1953 cutscene, a young and slender Rod is seen lying on the ground, enjoying himself while singing about Eagles Junior High School, where monks and nuns serve as teachers. He dreams of becoming someone important and hopes to never become overweight and bald like certain adults. However, Rod struggles to recall memories from his early years, making it difficult for him to connect with his past and his mother. Returning home, Rod sits down to eat his food when his father enters the scene. Desperately seeking his father's approval, Rod yearns for the chance to taste his father's famous ice cream someday. However, his father reacts strangely, shouting that Rod will never be allowed to have the ice cream. This revelation leaves Rod profoundly disappointed, feeling left out while other children get to enjoy the treat, even though he's well behaved. His gaze shifts towards the fridge which is secured with a padlock and adorned with a prominent sign reading do not touch. This suggests that Rod rebelled against his father's pleas and given in to temptation resulting in his weight gain. The excess weight then led to bullying, depression and ultimately contributed to his transformation into an evil ice cream maker who is very very resentful for his own stupid actions. In the sixth installment, Jay and Mike find themselves confined to the control room of Rod's ice cream factory. Tirelessly monitoring the security cameras in a desperate attempt to locate their missing friends, Liz and Charlie. Their eyes dart across the footage until they spot Charlie within the kitchen area where a chubby cook named Maddie resides. As the events unfold on the security screens, Charlie clearly manages to break free from the confines of the kitchen and makes his way to the control room where Jay and Mike anxiously await. With Charlie reunited with his friends, they know their mission is not yet complete. Their focus now shifts towards rescuing Les, the final member of their group, before they can make their daring escape from the factory. In a shocking revelation, more details emerge about Sister Madeline, who has transformed into an evil nun. A game that I previously made a video about, which I highly recommend you watch by hitting on the card above or the link down in the description. She is depicted as kidnapping children and conducting deadly experiments at her school. Grim scenes from 1954 showcase numerous graves of innocent children as the remorseless evil nun casually walks over them. Furthermore, she turns one of the nuns named Philippa into her own slave during the same year. It becomes evident that Philippa, under the influence of Sister Madeline, was responsible for Joseph Sullivan's tragic death as she was in to run him over. These revelations shed light on the complex web of manipulation orchestrated by Sister Madeline, who was confined to the school premises but needed someone to carry out her nefarious deeds beyond its boundaries. In the seventh Ice Cream installment, Charlie, Mike, and Jay continue their relentless search for Les. Frustration mounts from Mike, driven by his deep affection for Les, causing him to strike the control room controls and a fit of of anger. Unintentionally, his actions open the pipes within the factory. Seizing an opportunity, Mike decides to venture into one of the pipes, determined to locate Les himself. Meanwhile, Les finds herself trapped within a laboratory, struggling to navigate her way back to her friends. Through perseverance, Mike eventually discovers Les and their reunion brings a renewed sense of hope. As they strive to find an escape route, Jay assists by aiding their search for 
for a key card, a crucial item needed for their freedom. Jay then directs Charlie to once again board the ice cream truck and secretly follow Rod into town, as Jay believes that's where they may find the elusive key card. In Rod's secure safe, Charlie discovers an article dated January 4th, 1941. The article highlights the extraordinary circumstances surrounding sister Madeline's overnight pregnancy and the subsequent birth of a healthy baby boy, who happens to be Rod himself. According to the article, the initial plan was for Rod to remain under the care of Sister Madeleine and the nuns. But as we know, that did not come to pass as Rod was instead raised by his father, Joseph. This discovery reveals that Rod eventually learned about the unusual circumstances of his birth. Quickly seizing the keycard, Charlie returns to the ice cream factory, discreetly hiding in the back of the van. He then proceeds to drop the keycard through the pipe to aid less in her escape. Meanwhile, Charlie indulges in a meticulously presented cake that has mysteriously appeared in the center of the room where the children were previously held captive. With the keycard now in their possession, Liz and Mike use it to navigate their way out of the laboratory, seeking means of escape. Amongst their findings, they come across a note from November 21st, 1943. The note unveils a hidden truth about Sister Madeline's genuine desire to reunite with her deceased daughter, overshadowing any maternal love that she may have had for Rod. Her relentless obsession drives her to consider unthinkable actions, even attempting to transform Rod's baby boy into that of her lost daughter. It becomes evident that Sister Madeline's focus on her own agenda may have led to Rod being taken away from her by Joseph Sullivan, who wanted the best for Rod. Tragically, due to a misguided pact, Sister Madeline begins to undergo a transformation, transitioning from an ordinary woman to a demonic creature known as the evil nun. After a challenging journey, Mike and Les eventually find a way to reunite with each other. In an attempt to make their escape even more romantic, Mike gathers the courage to try to confess his feelings for her. However, Les too busy to listen, promptly jumps into the pipe, urging him to prioritize reuniting with Jay and Charlie before discussing anything else. Upon seeing Mike and Les return safely, Jay is overjoyed to have his friends back by his side. Unfortunately, Charlie becomes preoccupied with the tempting cake and is caught in the act by Rod. Panicked, Charlie flees inadvertently, leading Rod straight to the control room where they had been hiding. The tension intensifies as Rod closes in on the group, heightening the stakes of their escape and putting their plans in jeopardy. In a surprising post credit scene, it is revealed that the evil known Sister Madeline has successfully broken free from the confines of the school and arrives at Rod's factory. This development further complicates the already dire situation for Charlie, Mike, Les, and Jay. Now, in addition to facing the threat posed by Rod, they must also confront the presence of Rod's own mother, the evil nun. The scene definitely hints at the challenging and thrilling adventures that await the protagonists in the next installment. The eighth installment of Ice Cream is not yet out, but it is said to be the final installment of the game, suggesting anything may happen and seal the story finally. And that's about it for this video, folks. What do you think will happen in the eighth episode? I'm actually quite invested to find that now. If you enjoyed this video, you can stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host, Star, and I will see you on the next one. Have a fantastic day.